Today we're going to be learning about speed time graphs. Speed time graphs can be used to describe the motion of an object. We can use the graph to find acceleration and the distance traveled by an object. In our diagram on the right, we have time in seconds on the x-axis and speed in meters per second on the y-axis. The speed time graph has a positive slope. This is called acceleration. Then the object stops accelerating and travels at a constant speed. The acceleration here is zero. The object is still moving. The negative slope shows deceleration. To calculate acceleration, we can use the formula acceleration is equal to the change in speed divided by time, the object. This comes from the triangle on the left here where distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. In our diagram, the total distance traveled is equal to the area of the orange triangle plus the area of the purple rectangle plus the area of the pink triangle. Finally, to find the average speed of the object, we need to find the total distance traveled divided by the total time taken to complete the journey. Here is our first example. A train changes speed as shown in the speed time graph. On the x-axis, we have time in seconds from 0 to 80 seconds. On the y-axis, we have speed in meters per second from 0 to 40 meters per second. A. Find the total distance traveled. To calculate the total distance, we need to find the area under the curve. To do this simply, we can split the area into three sections. We can break the shape into area 1, area 2, and area 3. The total distance will be the sum of area 1, 2, and 3. Area 1 will be given by half base height, where the base is 30 and the height is 40. Area 2 will be given by base times height, which is 30 times 40. And lastly, area 3 will be given by half base height, where the base is 20 and the height is 40. When we evaluate this on the calculator, we'll get 2,200 metres. B. What is the average speed of the train? The average speed will be given by the total distance divided by time. The total distance travelled is 2,200 metres. The total time taken was 80 seconds. The average speed is 27.5 meters per second. From A to B, the original speed was zero and the final speed was 40. The difference will be 40 subtract zero. To find the change in time, we'll do 30 subtract zero. The acceleration from A to B will be given by one and one third meters per second squared. To find the acceleration between B and C, we need to find the change in speed divided by time. The change in speed will be given by 40 subtract 40, and the change in time will be given by 60 subtract 30. The acceleration between B and C will be 0 meters per second squared. To find the acceleration between C and D, we'll do the change in speed, which will be 0 subtract 40, divided by the change in time, which will be 20, given by 80 subtract 60. The acceleration between C and D will be negative 2 meters per second squared. This is the same as a deceleration of 2 meters per second squared. Here is our last example. The speed time graph shows the train's journey. A. Find the total distance travelled. Again, the total distance travelled can be calculated by finding the area under the curve. We're going to split this shape into area 1, area 2, area 3, and area 4. The total distance travelled will be the sum of all these areas. We'll do half base height, where base is 15 and height is 10 plus area 2 will be 15 multiplied by 25, area 3 will be 10 multiplied by 25, and area 4 will be half of 10 multiplied by 25. Evaluate this on your calculator and we'll get 825 meters. B, find the average speed of the journey. To find the average speed, we'll do the total distance divided by time where the total distance is 825 metres, total time taken is 35 seconds. We'll then get 23.6 metres per second. D, 
decalculate the deceleration of the train in the last 10 seconds in meters per second squared. To calculate deceleration, we're first going to find acceleration. Acceleration is given by the change in speed over the change in time. We can do the final speed, subtract the initial speed. To find the change in time, we can do the final time, subtract the initial time. The final speed is 0 meters per second. The initial speed was 25 meters per second. The final time is 35 and the initial time was 25. The acceleration is then negative 2.5 meters per second squared. Therefore, the deceleration is equal to 2.5 meters per second.